Dudes behind the foods listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Zoc Doc, as in Z O C D O C, my friend Zoc Doc. You're trying to find a cause for your symptoms, and you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questions, advice from so-called experts. Guess what? You don't need that. You go to Zoc Doc, and they'll let you know what is up. And I know, my friends, you're just like me. You go a little crazy when you're going online and finding questionable advice, but you don't need that when you got Zoc Doc. Go to zocdoc.com/foods and download Zoc Doc, the Zoc Doc app for free. Then find and book a Top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash foods. ZocDoc.com slash foods. We like to eat all the eats and drink all the drinks. And yo, Tractor Beverage sent us all their different flavors of their beverages. And man, look, I'm not I'm not yanking your tail here when I tell you that these things were delicious, okay? Available at the restaurants you love, Tractor makes certified organic non-GMO drinks the clean way. Think organically farmed beverages with no artificial ingredients, no phony colors, no mystery preservatives, and no pesticides of concern, all right? So before I blabber on about my favorite flavor, the blood orange blood, oh man, that blood orange was delicious and refreshing, please check out organicimpacttracker.com. It's so refreshing to see a company doing this, keeping synthetic pesticides out of the soil, supporting organic farming, and reducing carbon emissions. You can call me a fan. I'm trying to get the people in the mood. Oh, huh? I'm sorry. This is uh, Sexy David's back here again. <laughs> you should have warned me. I didn't know Sexy David was coming back today. Hey, what's up, mom? Why don't you walk that fat ass over here like a duck and waddle that goddamn thing? You know what I'm saying? Oh, quack, quack. Yeah, quack, quack, bitch. What's up? <laughs> hey, hey. Robin's favorite. <laughs> hey, hey, mom, mom. I didn't... I, I, <laughs> Hey, David's mom. He didn't hey, get whoa, in, whoa, whoa, wait, wait. He didn't get into a fight this week. I swear. I, okay, let me just do this real quick. All right, mother, no black eyes. Okay. Whoa, racist. Black eyes. Black eyes. Oh. Did, I not, did I not enunciate? Jeez, oh, man. Oh my god, dude. Wow. You know what really sucks in the winter when all that black eyes just keeps ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> He's ruining the neighborhood. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> can't go anywhere with that black eye. See what I mean? <laughs> they just keep terrorizing the streets. <laughs> Hi, happy 420, dude. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm not high. <laughs> uh, yes, 420. Can I tell you something? Tell me something. I found out that there's a happy medium of me and weed. Is it? You found your happy medium. Yes. No more. No vapes. Uh-huh. No edibles. Yeah, that's yeah. You you're talking about the very concentrated shit, right? No there. more. Yeah, just a small little joint and one puff, and it's and I'm still cognizant, but it's relaxed. And you like it? Oh, not all the time. I have to be knowing that that day I'm not doing anything. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like I know that I'm not gonna read emails. <laughs> I'm not gonna focus on shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I'm I'm okay with it, but it can't last more than like. An hour or so, because once it goes to like two, I'm like, this is dumb. I don't, I don't want to do this. How did you figure this out about yourself? Did someone be like, hey man, just take a little? So just, you ain't got shit to do. Like, listen, you little fucking fat pussy, <laughs> just fucking smoke mm, this shit. Fat pussies. Oh yeah. You, uh, you took you took me back, but uh, <laughs> but to tell me tell me about your So story. I've been gardening a lot, right? So uh, I, we we I started this little gardening group with a bunch of old Korean people. It's hilarious and, and it's adorable. The, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, when I was looking back at this, I'm like. If you would have told me five years ago, I'd be have walking around with a straw hat, <laughs> sunglasses, yeah. looking like a fucking whack ass motherfucker just over here just gardening <laughs> and shit. I would have told you you're fucking nuts. But these dudes, what we do like almost every weekend is that we garden. We're starting this like sustainable garden thing okay. where everything kind of feeds into each other. Ooh. All this fresh fruit, you fresh guys veggies. You eat each other's veggies and shit. Yes, we do. Yeah. And then uh, we meet up. We grill up meats. We cook. Smoke cigars, smoke a little weed, okay. have some few drinks, and then we kind of make it a weekend thing. Wow. And so it's like a little garden slash food group. Well, that sounds delightful. It is crazy. And so they, you know, they smoke and stuff. So uh-huh. I was like, let me just, it's been a while. Let me just take a little joint, uh-huh. right? And I took a puff, no more than a puff, mm-hmm. chilled out. And I was like, oh, this is a good happy medium. Anything more than that, I don't want it. And they're like, by the way, our cucumbers are laced with fentanyl. <laughs> 
where am I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you have their fucking salad and you're like, <laughs> well, so this is the thing too. Uh, I had that uh, one of the guys on my podcast and he's doing a lot of shrooms oh. and like shrooms kind of help them unlock a lot of this trauma and shit. Okay. I have no interest in shrooms, right? I'm, I have slight interest in shrooms. The only reason why is because it's like, I have nothing to unlock. Uh -huh. You know, I've been doing a lot of better health therapy. <laughs> have you guys walked around and squeezed a squat and a squat squat? <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, we've been, I've been going through therapy and everything else. And I don't feel like I have anything I need to like, you know, get out of my system. Yeah. You know I mean, I feel like, cause we've, we're just, we just always get our shit out of our system all the True. time. So I don't, I don't At care. the massage parlors. Yeah. Yeah. All the time, dude. <laughs> And I tell them to look me in the mouth. <laughs> look you I, in the mouth. <laughs> I go, yes. <laughs> look into there. <laughs> look, at, look me in the mouth. And she goes, I thought my English was bad. <laughs> I was like, no, no. Look no, me, look me into no, the you mouth. No, you say, suck my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude. So I, I did a podcast on that, right? Yeah, People got yeah. so mad at me. They got mad at you? Because I was making jokes about the Dalai Lama, yeah. right? And here's the funny thing, right? <laughs> Can I just tell you what I dislike about people on the internet? Uh, so when I when we did this podcast, I read about the Dalai Lama and Buddhism for like fucking three days, right? Okay. Just so I have enough backing and information. Yeah. One of the things that I hate that young people do a lot, oh, no, let me rephrase that, just people on the internet do, not even young people, yeah. is that so f like about a week later, Vice mm. put out this article about what the, sunk, the tongue sucking thing was, okay. right? So- but prior to that, I scoured the internet for fucking three days looking for what the fuck is that tongue sucking thing? Yeah. And the only thing that people said, even people in Tibet, they yeah. were like, no, that's from this old ancient thing where they used to stick out their tongue because of a despotic ruler who was very evil. So they said that if you stick out your tongue, it was a form of greeting to show that your tongue isn't black. So you weren't the reincarnate version of that king. Okay. Right? And that was the only thing that was out there. All right. And then- when my podcast released two days before, Vice did an article explaining what that was. Okay. And so they're like, how come you didn't know this? Do your research. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> the article literally came out yesterday and you're acting as if you knew this the whole time. Like, it's bullshit. Yeah. And like, I literally researched that for fucking like three days straight. And nobody said anything. <laughs> and the first arguments were, oh, you should just be respectful of religion. But in the first like two days of the podcast, nobody said that until the Vice article came out. So what does it mean? What is it? They're just saying that it's like a Tibetan thing where like old grandparents, it's the exact translation wasn't suck my tongue, it's eat my tongue. Okay. Which is like a joke that grandparents say to little kids. Okay. So, which, listen, we can choose to believe that or not. But yeah. the weird thing is, it's like in the first part when I did that, right? Nobody said that. And then all of a sudden, Mm. Those comments that kind of wrote the, they deleted and they rewrote their comments saying like, how come you didn't know this? Interesting. And I'm like, motherfucker, I got the receipts. I saw the same fucking people <laughs> write that, but they didn't want to be wrong. Right. So it's like, listen here, don't get mad at me for that shit. When you just found out yourself, you fucking cocksucking bitches, suck my tongue. You sung tucking, you <laughs> sung tucking titches. Oh, that's my Tibetan name. <laughs> yeah, sung tucking. <laughs> sung tucking. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to get that shit out. How Good. dare you? I'm glad you got a chance to clear it up, dog. Yeah, but listen, if that's true, I'm really sorry, Dalai Lama. <laughs> but it's still fucking weird. You're a world leader. You, you, come on. Yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, re you know, read read the global room a bit. Yeah, you're, uh, well, find a um a translator to help you um phrase that differently. And then also too, there was like this thing where I I read a, it was like on CNN. There was a a, a Delhi based child rights group. They're like, well, yeah, we know about the tongue sticking out thing, but that's still weird. Like that's still, ah. that's still super inappropriate. Yeah. So, Delhi based and they also agreed. And then there was also people. So I asked my homie, uh, Pooj, uh -huh. right? So his, his parents are, are Buddhist uh -huh. and they're from India. And I was like, hey, Pooj, what the fuck is this thing about, right? Cause I know that your parents are Buddhist and they're from like India and stuff like that. And he was like, I don't know what the fuck that shit is. That shit is fucking weird. Uh, uh -huh. And I was like, go ask your parents, right? This is before I did the podcast. Yeah. And he was like, no, my parents think that's fucking weird too. Yeah. So it's not a black and white situation. There's people out there that still think it's fucking weird. Again with the black shit, dude? Dude, let me tell you something, man. That black ice is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> the streets of the winter. <laughs> um, I brought us some treats. Um, Wow. Can we just have like a salad or something? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I had a, a, an original plan, but I had to run some errands. So it like <coughs> fucked my plans up. But here, let's save that for the. What is that? Oh, here, let's save it for the oh, second one. I didn't one. show you. Good save I, for, I save opened it the second. other way, dude. Yeah, you sure did. Um, I can show uh, you. Robin Couch, do you have like a nail clipper or something? What the f What is it? God. I think I have scissors. Why do they ziplock it? I don't know. Who the fuck ziplocks shit like that? 
What do you have in there? <laughs> well, what if I told you? It's my BGC. <laughs> that the Dalai Lama also sells lengua tacos. <laughs> Dog, <laughs> that's actually a fire ass idea, dude. It's oh, oh yeah. Mexican Indian. Thank you. Food. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> Nepalese. Wait, where's the Dalai Lama from? Is it is it Nepal? Uh, I think so. I don't know. It's in India. Del- like, so, yeah, India. Yeah. What if he's like, you guys? I was advertising <laughs> my food truck, and he takes off his fucking robe. <laughs> <laughs> eat at Dali's. <laughs> Just doing this. Okay. <laughs> he's like, I meant eat my tongue, eat my my my, my lengua tacos. Yeah. And he's just like, híjole, de la chingada, you don't understand. Hey, por qué la And he's like, he's like, and then he part, he turns on the music and he's like, Dale Lama. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lama Lengua, dude. <laughs> you guys don't know. All right, so what I have here, David So. Yes. Since I had to pivot, okay? So I'm going through Uber Eats trying to find something for us. You had a Ross pivot. Pivot! Yeah, anybody who thinks Friends isn't funny, you're a fucking idiot and you're dumb. I think they're just trying to Haters. ride the social media wave, go along with the crowd. But I have a $200 can of <laughs> caviar. Tim, <laughs> you're, this is a little excessive. <laughs> Siberian Supreme um, Sturgeon Row. Ooh, this is, can I tell you something about caviar, everybody? I love the packaging that they always do with it. It just makes it look so regal. This looks so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Wow. Regal damn. like an eagle. And they put rubber on it on the outside. Uh-huh. That's how you know it's <laughs> it's protected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also invested in the $8 pearl spoon because they say it's the best <laughs> thing to scoop your caviar with. You're fucking extra as shit today. Last time it was fucking black ink, <laughs> steak and lobster. <laughs> and now, now, now I feel so ashamed of my fucking food. <laughs> I'm so upset about my food. Chill, chill. It's okay, dog. And also, of course, I got some creme fraiche. Oh, creme fraiche. Way better than sour cream. Okay. And, but instead of the little crackers to put on there, have you done this before? Caviar and creme fraiche on top, skin? on top of fried chicken. Listen. Oh, wow, this is way too bright now. <laughs> I've see, this is this was the trend for the longest time. Yeah, right? yeah. Because it's like the chicken skin. It's like a very delicious chickeny crostini type mm-hmm. of thing. Salty. And I've always wanted to do this, but I never got to. I'm fucking hyped right my now. My guy, I got you. Dude, I'm sucking you off. Suck my tongue, dog. Oh my God. Tim. Dude, I know. I'm also <laughs> excited. I did this during the the pandemic it was a restaurant around my area that was doing it. And, um, and I'm going to show you. you my BGC. Big Gordian cock. Go- Gordian. <laughs> Gordian cock. All right. So here's, ooh, here's what I'm going to do. Have you, seen, have you seen those videos of them extracting the caviar from the actual fish? Whoa. Whoa, dog. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Have you seen those videos? Yes, I saw. Disgusting. The amount of fucking eggs that is in one sturgeon is nuts. It's like 80% of their body. All right. There's also, I included a a honey biscuit if you want to. I feel like that would be good with the crumb fresh and the caviar as well. A little salt, sweet situation. Ooh, are you going to do like a full bite or just the skin? I'm going to, I'm going to do it with just the skin. Okay, I'll do one of those too. Tim. Wow, how fun is, how fun is this? This chicken is from, um. Uh, crispy, crunchy chicken, and uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm hyped for this because I'm also very hungry. Can I ask what exactly is creme fraiche? Because I don't think I've ever known. It's fancier sour cream, basically. Oh, that's it. Yes. That was anticlimactic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, damn, I don't have a scooper for our creme fraiche. Less though. tangy, less thick. Here, I'm gonna use a piece of my biscuit to scoop my creme fraiche. And um, hold on. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And it just broke off inside it. Okay. Hold on. Now I'm going to just eat that. There's a, isn't that a fork and spoon over there on the other side? Oh, that's a scissor. That's a scissor. <laughs> um, shit. Hold on, y'all. I don't want to use the, the special caviar spoon. I have some plastic ware. I can bring it yes. to you if you want. Thank you, Robin, Robin. Couch. <laughs> The people that just listen to the podcast, it's like fucking dead air. I was, I know. I was finding utensils and shit. <laughs> Um, thank you, Robin. Oh my God, Robin Couch is on point, and also like like we always say, her butt, crazy. Her butt is just, her butt is worth two hundred dollar caviar. Right? Yes, 
It's like oh this. Oh my god! <laughs> it's, it's like this biscuit without the lumps. <laughs> Thank you. That's going on my tombstone. Yeah. That's, that's how my I hit epitaph. See, that's how fucking sexy David hits all people. Girl, your ass is like this biscuit without a lumps. Girl, look, I will buy the most expensive fish eggs to get in that ass. They, yeah. Honestly, nicer than about 99% of the men out there. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Okay, I'm going to load this motherfucker up with some Tim. caviar because fuck it, we going in. <gasps> Tim, that's crazy. You're acting crazy. Give me that spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. And by the way, I never do this on the podcast. I'm going to fucking take a fucking picture of this. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, look at this. You know what? I'm going to put it on this side because it's a little prettier. I'm putting a gratuitous amount of creme fraiche. For those of you who are just listening, we are putting creme fraiche and very expensive caviar on chicken skin. And um, I'm sorry if this is boring for you, but... Um, Watch it on YouTube, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I'm t- okay. We got to take okay. Okay, okay, okay. We're taking photos we're of this, We're taking pictures here. I'll, I'll entertain the podcasters while you take pictures. Oh, um, my God. Can you feel the love tonight? There's some lions fucking... <laughs> Nala laid on the grass and looked real horny and looked up at Simba's face. Okay, let's do this, Tim. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Let's get it. Okay. Listen. Listen. You know, you have openly heard me say on this podcast that caviar... You know, it's not one of those things. It's like, mm-hmm. this with this just slightly tangy, creamy creme fraiche, right? Light as hell. Adds just enough, enough lift for that fatty chicken skin. That is probably one of the best bites I've had in a very long time. Ooh-wee. Like, you know when you see things that are hyped mm-hmm. online? You're mm-hmm. like, it can't be that good. Right. This is worth it. That was pretty. Um, That's fucking amazing. I was just going to say the exact same word, and now I can't say it because you said it before me. That is a uh, sabaydi. <laughs> I'll tell you. <coughs> that is tongue sucking delicious. Let me tell you. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to take one more bite before we actually start talking about shit again. Um, well, this is a food podcast anyways. All right. Yeah. It's a news behind the foods. We. Oh, okay. We're going to take a break. Be right back. Ah, uh, David, can you look at this lump on my penis? <laughs> okay. Please. No, right. You know what? Never mind. Don't look at it because I use ZocDoc, okay? You've been stewing about a health problem you have. You almost resort to texting your group chat to get your friend's opinions. We all go through it. Or you want to show your friend the little lump on your penis, all right? It happens. Or maybe you're going through social media. You're trying to find a cause for your symptoms. Uh, you know, you got that little lump. You got that little extra lump. You got the little uh, wart that popped up out of nowhere with the little bit of juice coming out of it. And you stumble down a TikTok rabbit hole full of questionable advice from so-called experts. I'm doing finger quotes. Well, when someone is just exceptionally good at what they do, it can be a waiter, a chef, or a doctor, you know you're in good hands. And that's why you gotta go with ZocDoc. When you find the right doctor, you can feel it. You feel heard and at ease, okay? There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment, expecting to be the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do and better places to be, all right? Well, check this out. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient reviewed and fits their needs okay with zocdoc there are no alarms and no surprises go to zocdoc.com slash foods and download the zocdoc app for free then find and book a top rated doctor today many are available within 24 hours that's zocdoc.com slash foods all right zocdoc.com slash foods oh no what do you mean oh no oh no you know what it is is this a durian ding 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 what the is a durian Nope, not gonna do it. This is so funky. <laughs> you will go to train stations, bus stations out there, and it'll be like, no durian allowed, because it'll funk up the whole place. And that's what y'all decide to feed us today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no, bro. 
Hell no. There's a lot of things I will not do. And I'm not doing this. You hear me? I'm not doing it. Oh, I done got the nap. It's everywhere. <laughs> Oh my God! Here's what's weird. What is wrong with your people? I, hey, look. Normally, I would have something to say about that. Right. But, but this time, I get it. <laughs> David, so I also brought you something to drink. Ooh. Um, a little something light and refreshing to complement this salty treat we're having, all right? Mm. Um, I was walking through BevMo and I saw these um, grapefruit beers and I just thought that sounded good because I like grapefruit. Are you a grapefruit fan? I love grapefruit, man. Me too, man. Yeah, did your mom back in the day used to just peel the grapefruit for you so it was just the flesh on the inside? Oh, yes, because they're so fucking thick mm -hmm. and difficult to get through. Yeah. It was the best. My mom uh, had me eating grapefruit. I love grapefruit. I just always loved the sour citrusy situation as a young sh boy. Ooh. Um, so cheers to you, brother. Cheers to the great shoot we had yesterday at Disneyland, brother. Oh, man. Cheers to you losing weight. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fucking delicious. Mmm. That's tasty. Look at us having a wonderful lunch together. Wow, this is, um, these are the things I live for, my friends. This is what I live for, huh? Moments where you get to have some amazing bites of food. Mm hmm Good drinks with good friends, man. This is amazing. And on some bougie, well, not bougie, but on some foodie shit, this pairs really well with this meal we're eating. It's mm -hmm. like great. It really just kind of balances out your, your like everything going on in my mouth, you know? You know the funniest thing about this guy is every time we go out to eat, he keeps finding out things have dairy in it. <laughs> it's like I can't have this because of cheese. There's the joke part, right? But then there's a the real part. When we shot this Disneyland episode, and this was like, I'm just going to get some popcorn. I'm like, bro, that popcorn has butter in it. I know that. <laughs> you stupid idiot. You ate so much of it. I don't care. You know I love popcorn so much. I know, but Tim, it's so hard. Everything has dairy. Everything does. That's why my skin is trash. Everything fucking has dairy, man. Um, Sometimes that popcorn is accidentally vegan, as I like to call it. Oh. So sometimes things you would expect, kind of like Oreos. Oreos don't have any dairy in them. Oreos oh, word. are vegan. Oh, and like sometimes when you go to the Very movies, um, I you know sometimes like I started realizing that the movies will say artificial flavoring of but like butter flavoring, like it's not even actual butter. So oh, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh shit, yeah, give me that shit then. You know? <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. That is the burp of satisfaction. Let's right fucking there. go. You want to hear some funny shit? Please. Just, just now, as I was at Bevmo. Um, buying some drinks for us. Uh, there was two guys. It was, uh, I think he was white, either white or some type of like light skinned Latino and a black dude. They were getting some drinks, going to some type of 420 situation. And then um, the dude that was leaving, black dude, turned around. He's like, hey, man, can I just say, um, I'm a big fan of your work. I'm like, thank you, bro. We dapped it up. He's like, you know, um, I, you know, I love the podcast. You know, I grew up watching your stuff. He's like, I also love like, you know, like the, the fighting shit you do. And I'm like, uh, okay, okay, well, which, which one? what? He's like, you know, what was that movie? He's like, you were in it, you were fighting, um, and I already knew what he was gonna say. He was like, what was um, Blood and Bone? And get the <laughs> fuck out of here! And I'm like, I'm like, I know he's talking about that's not me, but that's the homie. You're getting the Asians confused. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm like, yeah, I promise you. I like how you said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I think I know what fucking movie I'm in, guy. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was like fucking with him, you know. Uh. And sometimes. People run into that dilemma where they recognize me on the street, but they're cautious to mm. say something because they're like, do I actually have the wrong Asian? I got the same thing. So this guy came up to me <laughs> and he was like, bro, I, you know, I fuck with you, but that shit that you do in North Korea <laughs> is so <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> How could you, man? How could you, dude? Just fucking re reunite your fucking country together. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and I'm like, no, I'm, I promise you that's not me. That's Dante Bosco. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, like, man. Oh, so you too Hollywood for me now, huh? -huh? <laughs> you so you Hollywood now, bro? Like, okay, okay, motherfucking J J James De La Ghetto yeah. tried to big time <laughs> me at the Bevmo, but not any um. And he was like, nah, but I, no, I swear. He's like, no, because I, I know that podcast you do with your boy and, and the girl co-host, and I know you had a kid. Congrats. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, so see, I do fuck with you. I'm like, I know. He's like, you just, that, you got it mixed up, bro. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> That's the best part. 
Was it just like, I got I to gotta make this work, so I got to keep questioning this. Just in disbelief. Are you 100% sure? <laughs> no. Uh, but I, and I, was, I tried to, like, make him feel better. I'm like, okay, look, man, look, I know we do kind of look alike, though, okay? Like, you're not you're not being racist, I know. We kind, we kind of favor each other, I know. It's okay. You know, here's something funny. You just reminded me of this, and I, I wrote this down to talk about on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Another topic, so I'm like, should I bring this for my podcast or this one? And this <laughs> one I will, because it's perfect. It's okay. another fan interaction. Okay. So I got a little high. Mm-hmm. Last weekend, right? And this is one of those moments where I'm like, I looked a little badass, but the guy didn't know why. <laughs> so sometimes you'll run into really awkward fans. I tend to run in, most of them aren't, but my awkward fans, the ones that are really weird, tend to be really fucking weird. So people know that I box and I kickbox, right? You know, as a hobby. Yeah. So I went home, I went to go grab some allergy medicine at like a Walgreens mm. on the way back, but I was still a little, little, little faded, but I was okay. I go into the grocery store. I see this dude come up to me. And you could already tell by body language how weird somebody's going to be, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Guy comes up. He goes, hey, what's up, man? I see you out there, man. Yeah, because of you, I'm trying to get fit too. I'm trying to get fit. I'm okay. like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's dope. That's dope. <laughs> and he starts like throwing like jabs at my face. Oh, no. Right? Sa, 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 sa. <laughs> and like, look, we're in the middle, middle of a fucking Walgreens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck are you doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he was like, yeah, but, you know, like, I've been boxing too since I was a little kid. I got hands, too. And he's, like, trying to, you know, do all this other shit. Okay. He doesn't know I'm fucking, I'm a little blasted. I'm a little high, right? Mm. And so this guy, I'm like, hey, man, like, not in public or whatever, right? I was like, just kind of, yeah, well, chill, 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 chill. I'm joking around with him, right? Mm. He's like, you know, I still fuck you up, though. Like, oh, <laughs> why do people do this? <laughs> right? Uh-huh. And so as this guy says this shit, right? He comes at me. He's not going to hit me, though, mm-hmm. right? But he does this one thing where he turns around. He goes, all right, Mousy, he turns around and he turns back around to kind of make me flinch. Mm-hmm. And I just stood there and I stared directly in his face and I'm not moving. He's like, oh shit, you got good eyes. <laughs> and then he walks away. Okay. But he didn't know. I didn't flinch because I'm high as fuck. <laughs> 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 it was just, I was so fucking delayed because <laughs> like, it actually scared me. <laughs> but then I was just so high. He just went, and I went. <laughs> and after he went away, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I see. He's like, you got them eyes. I'm like, nah, bro. As soon as he walks out the door, you're like, oh, <laughs> shit. Amazing. Whoa. I, I fell to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Fucking the one time that shit worked out for me, man. That's a great story. I don't understand why people do that, though. Wait, this fool's coming up. He's like, ah, ah, eh, 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 eh. Like, come on, guy. Don't do this. <laughs> you want to hear a hilarious, awkward story that happened to my boy Benji? And I'm going to miss some details because it's a longer story, but I'll get to the gist of it. It's so fucking funny, right? So Benji, you know, as we discussed before, Benji is kind of a, an enigma. You know what I'm saying? Came to L.A. is kind of like manager, rapper. He's, he's very involved in many different scenes out here now. A mover and shaker, if you will. Okay. Um, but so he was in some situation a couple months ago where he was... Um, Doing some type of shit with Diddy and Diddy's camp, okay? Like, Benji's at the studio sessions. Like, he's a part of, like, some writing sessions sometimes. Whatever, right? So Diddy is going around with a camera crew, documenting everything. And by the way, of course fucking Benji would be somehow next to fucking Diddy himself. I don't understand how, but whatever. He's just there. He's always there. And um, so Diddy has a camera crew. So ma- mind you, Diddy, uh, you know, he's, he calls himself Love, right? Now, it's one of his new names. He's like, Oh, for real? Yeah, he's like, just call me Love, right? So he has this handshake that people in his circle know. It's like where he's, he does like, oh, okay, love, love. And he like, it's an L and some shit. I don't, I've never seen it, but Benji's telling me this shit. Only Diddy can make you do something so stupid. So here's what happened, right? So <laughs> Diddy is coming up to him with his camera crew, walking through the studio. Benji's next to two other guys who have been there before who know the fucking handshake. <laughs> so, oh, no. I'm getting my ashes sweat right now. <laughs> Benji sees Diddy coming up to him and he's like and then Diddy try and Diddy's like oh yo what's up love to the first guy love love to the second guy and then tries to do it to Benji and Benji's like doesn't know what to do <laughs> oh god <laughs> has no idea what to do and so Diddy's like oh yeah, let me teach it to you let me teach it to you right teaches it to him real quick Benji's like, whatever, right? Because he's like, I'll never have to do this shit ever again in my life, whatever. I guess learns it, pre- thinks, pretends to learn it, moves on, right? <laughs> Later on that day, oh no, he's in the studio 
JD comes into the studio no. session with his camera crew again. He's like, I was so y'all love, love tuning this shit to other people. Goes up to Benji again. <laughs> Benji's like, I don't know. Benji's like, what? He's, then he's like, I just taught you. <laughs> oh my God, dude. And then he's, Benji was like, he had no clue. And it's just like, fucking, you know, it's so awkward. It's all caught on camera. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Dog. That's probably one of my worst. Not, you know, because I have anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I would do. I would have done the same shit. Like, I would have been like, like, you knew it. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm never gonna see Diddy ever again. Right, right. When the fuck? Yeah. And then right when he walks through the door, I would start sweating because <laughs> I would see it in slow mo. Rrr, boom, <laughs> boom, and I'm just sitting there trying to memorize it. Okay, okay, okay. L first. Okay, V, V, V. <laughs> and he comes up. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just hold his hand. I'm so sorry. Here's what you do in that situation, dog. <laughs> Suck his tongue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is what we do. Love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. Yeah. I. It would be so... If it was a random person, who cares? But it's fucking Diddy himself. How do you do? Do you get awkward with um handshakes? Are you an awkward handshake boy? Um. So there's a couple of producer friends of ours. I don't know what the fuck it is like within the music world. Mm. It's like sports, like basketball. Everybody has a secret handshake. Did you notice that? Um, oh. Um, uh, yes, a lot of people have secret handshakes. <laughs> so I remember walking into the studio with these guys, very famous producers. Mm -hmm. You guys would know them if I mentioned them, but comes in and they do this like double slap handshake thing. Okay. But the funny thing is, is like, listen, you never taught this to me. Mm. How am I supposed to know how to do this? Right, right, right. Right. And so they do this thing. Right. And I'm looking at it and they did it to me without. And I just, you know, you ever like try to hate, like shake my hand. And you don't know what the handshake and you actually fuck their fingers. Mm. <laughs> and so I like finger fuck them real quick. <laughs> you know, and it was just super awkward. Mm. I'm like, you know me. I'm just like, OK, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like You guys got to give me a hazard that all oh, you don't know. I was like, how would I know? We. How would I know this? <laughs> How am I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel so unfucking cool because everybody's doing it but me. Uh, one thing I had to learn when I switched to going to a uh, predominantly Mexican high school. Oh, and I forgot if we see, if I meet them again, I'm going to fuck up. Oh, you, you know what, man? Just pay attention, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. So, you know, my junior high elementary school was like mainly black and Asian, right? <laughs> I just picked it. I just pictured Diddy at home, <laughs> just practicing himself. Or, or like, or, or Diddy sitting on the couch, like, why didn't that guy just learn my? <laughs> I told him two times. Why didn't he learn my fucking hand? He's gonna shit? call him up. Do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> Someone get Benji two times on the phone right now. I know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I remember, you know, elementary school and like my first year of high school. The schools I went to were predominantly black and Asian, with little spurts of everything else, right? And that that handshake was always the, the usual. You go in with the this into the lock, into some resistance on the return, and usually the snap. Yes. So when I started going to Paramount High, predominantly Mexican, uh, like the Mexican go-to handshake was a there no lock. Immediate slide into the pound. Yes, that was my first lesson when I came to LA. Yes, and I had to learn that because I would, I would be trying to lock into the lock mm -hmm. into the resistance <clears throat> snap and motherfuckers would slide pounding everywhere. Bro, when I first moved to LA, <laughs> I didn't know about the fucking pound thing and this thing. <laughs> Nobody told me, right? It was this and this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes if you have good energy, this, this, and little quick little, you know, hug. Oh, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This shit here, didn't fucking know. Mm -hmm. Didn't fucking know that shit. It was just weird. And mm -hmm. I remember, <laughs> let me tell you what I did. <laughs> this was in, when I went to Riverside. Guy went like this. I needed a hand. He went like that, do the fist. Mm -hmm. And I went. Uh huh. Because <laughs> I was like, the fuck is this shit? I, I love doing that too. Um, sometimes with the white boys, I don't know where their energy falls. I don't know if we're going to end it with a pound or a snap. So while we're locking it up, I'll ask. I looked them in the eyes. I'm like, are we snapping or pounding? Snapping or pounding? Let me know. Let me know how we're going to end this. Snap or pound? Snap or pound? And sometimes it's a snap into a pound just to be sure, you know? Just <laughs> cut the... I just grab them and kiss them. <laughs> Start doing the cup. Yeah, you got my thing. <laughs> That's right. how white people do it. <laughs> on the couch confirm, please. 
I, I genuinely have no idea what you guys are talking about with all this oh, I'm handshake sorry. I'm sorry. etiquette. We'll this teach you. We'll teach you after the show. And this is what we're talking about. Yeah. This is why we have to ask. We don't know. You just never know. Um, you know, also, um, apparently you're not supposed to uh, grab women by the pussy. You know what? I, 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 <laughs> Okay. It's, it's a nude. It's, it's news to me. That's cr- <laughs> what <laughs> I well, know, Robin Couch. I've been gre- I've been greeting my aunts like that my whole life. <laughs> this is how I talk to all my friends. <laughs> yeah. Just one hand in the crotch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Robin does it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, oh, a little dry today. <laughs> yeah. Robin's never stopped us when we. Go. <laughs> <laughs> it's even weird when she grabs me by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, oh, uh, Doritos. Oh, bomb. Bang. Tim. <laughs> You're doing crazy stuff today, man. I don't know who you are today, but whoever you are today, I like it. Here's an, here's another reason why I've been having fun, um, like, treating us with expensive food for the podcast, right? You know, last time we did the fucking surf and turf, and this time, you know, blow a couple bills on uh, some like, caviar. And one of my favorite things I used to like doing um, is, like, just going out to different restaurants mm. and splurging a little bit on different kinds of food um, and, you know, just going on little fun little dates. You know what I'm saying? And uh, me and Chia don't have the time to really do that as much anymore. Stupid second baby. Stupid babies. So now I'm having going I'm going on dates with you. These are, <laughs> this is I'm using these days to fulfill that part of my life that, you know, has gone missing a little bit. And I'll tell you this, I enjoy doing this stuff with you because you pay for it. Yes, I do. <laughs> I write it off. And the great thing is too, like whenever we go out to eat, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't splurge or spend a lot of money on anything, right? <laughs> Except for gardening shit and food. <laughs> so like, that's really it. Yeah. So if I go out and I go out to eat, your boy's going to spend some money on some food mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm very frugal. Yeah. So guess, cause like, like I said, I go on Facebook marketplace to buy you shit. Yeah. But when it comes to food, I don't care. I like the experience. The experience that I walk away from it, it lasts with me for a lifetime. Yeah, man. It's just one of those things, you know, like, oh, try that on for size, buddy boy. <laughs> Pretty great, huh? Because this is already Cool Ranch. It has like a sour creamy type flavor already yeah. with it. I said flavor. <laughs> this is an amazing. <laughs> Next time, I'm uh, going to put in an oven with an aluminum foil. <laughs> and it's going to be a so delicious. Mmm. Uh. Look at us. We're so fancy. Yeah, creme fraiche and caviar. Maybe caviar by itself. I like it. I like it a lot, right? With creme fraiche on anything crispy and crunchy. It's just um it's Ave Maria. Let me ask you this, dog. <clears throat> Cause I was trying to decide. Now let me tell you, my parents, you know, also although my mom always made sure we had quality, delicious food, mm-hmm. they never knew about the bougie shit. They mm-hmm. never knew about like my, you know, my mom thought going out to you know, paying more than like twenty dollars for some sushi was like ridiculous. You know, we would. I would. I got my first taste of like sashimi and shit at the buffets, right? Fish so, tank sushi. So where and when and why did you start to experience and experiment with uh, bougier food, different kinds of food? Uh, you know, uh, from different just walks of life. When I got my first like part time job. <clears throat> okay. Which no. was what? Uh, it was at the men's warehouse. <clears throat> okay. First paycheck, gave it to my parents. <clears throat> Second paycheck, it was just like fun money, right? Because my parents, I was living with my parents. I only had to pay for gas and food mm-hmm. and that's it. And I had financial aid for school stuff. So when I, when I, I remember I went to this uh, fancier, re- it was, it's not that good. Like, but you don't know at the time, right? Yeah. It's like a French restaurant. I'm like, damn, this is different. You know what I mean? But then it, I remember it hurt a little bit uh-huh. because, you know what I'm saying? Like we're used to paying like five, eight bucks for food. Yeah, yeah. Or if and you split it up with a bunch of friends or whatever, whatnot, and this bill came out to like, it was like 50 or 60 bucks for just me. And I'm like, fuck, this is a lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. But I enjoyed the experience because I never had that before. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> even something small, like I remember um, my first time I ever had Thai food. Like the first time I had Thai food was super outside of my comfort zone. It was Japanese, Korean, or like American fast food. Mm-hmm. And Thai food to me was like, 
what the fuck is this? Mind blowing shit. It blew my fucking mind because <laughs> no other Asian food to me that I've tried at the time tasted like that. And mind you, I grew up on Vietnamese food. I grew up on all other stuff. But Thai food is like in a weird category of its own in that Southeast Asian area. Yeah. Heavy on the lemongrass. Yeah. Heavy, heavy on the coconut cremes. It's a lot of like uh, in your face ass flavors. Yeah. Bow, bow. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? More Thai kicks to your gut and shit. And like, you know, when you're younger, you don't. I don't. I think like subtle flavors aren't like your big thing, right? Mm. Like you, you like intense shit. Yeah. That's why we're eating hot Cheetos. We're eating fucking mm. sour straws. Facts. So when I had that shit, I was eating Thai food constantly. Right. I'm like, give me that fucking Thai curry shit. Mm -hmm. Give me the tom yum. Give me all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Sour, sweet, oh. salty. When people first have tom yum, tom yum, tom yum, they um like, I see it in their eyes sometimes. They're like, they don't know how to. Handle this fireworks. Yeah. That's what it, it literally reminded me of fireworks. Like yeah. boom. Yeah. What the fuck did I just eat? Yeah. And I first, then I go, do I like this? <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's a intense. Yeah. And then I go, I really like this. Yeah. And I don't know why. You know, it's funny. Is like, you know, like, so Paramount, as I said, is a very predominantly Mexican area. Um, and I think Mexican flavors with the sour and the spicy, like, super leans into shit, like. Tom yum, and there was another uh, soup we had. I forget which one that like a lot of Mexican families would come in and order. They loved it, and um, and the tom more ka. tom ka, and the more I grew up, you know, and was kind of trying all the all the real Mexican food in Paramount, the more I was realizing the similarities between just like the like the flavor palette. You know what I'm saying? Where it was like, okay, yeah, um, everything is like. Some limon, some fucking chile, right? Like everything spicy and sour just coming together. Even mm -hmm. even their fucking candy is sour and spicy, yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, 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 They're fruits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there was this Mexican girl that I was dating. Mm -hmm. I never understood. Because, you know, Korean people, we just eat the fruit straight up. Mm -hmm. But every time she ate fruit, she wouldn't eat it unless it had like tahine. <laughs> she was like, nah, I can't eat this. I'm like, I need like tahine for it. I'm like, just eat the fucking fruit. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, no, no. It doesn't taste good with that. But she had to have it with that stuff. And I thought it was weird. I remember... You know, one time Amber Rose posted just some fruit from the Mexican fruit cart, you know, with the tahine, with everything on it. And somebody from not L.A., of course, um, and, and not a bigger city, was like, LOL, this bitch eating fruit with seasoning on it? <laughs> like, just confused. Come on. I had no idea what it was, you know? How dare you? It's a different thing, man. It's a whole different thing. We're going we're gonna, to um, suck each other's tongues and we'll be right back. Dudes behind the foods, listeners, have you heard of Tractor Beverage? If you haven't listened, I'm not just saying this, right? These mofos sent us a box of this stuff and it is hella good, dude. Some of the best non-carbonated drinks I've ever had. My favorite drink that I had was the strawberry dragon fruit. That was c, -c crazy Or, as they say out in the streets, brazy, my friends. Delicious. And I gotta tell you, the packaging was amazing. And look, if, wherever you go, if you see a tract of beverage, you have to get it. Even the regular tea is freaking delicious. I love tractor beverages. Available at the restaurants you love. Tractor makes certified organic non-GMO drinks the clean way. Think organic organically farmed beverages with no artificial ingredients, no phony colors, no mystery preservatives, and no pesticides of concern. In 2022 alone, their drinks kept 25.8 tons of synthetic pesticides out of our food system. I love Tractor. When you do great things and you make delicious stuff, makes a fat David freaking happy. So before I blabber on about strawberry dragon fruit, my friends, my favorite flavor, please check out organicimpacttracker.com. It's so refreshing to see a company doing this, keeping synthetic pesticides out of the soil, supporting organic farming and reducing carbon emissions. Call me a fan. It tastes good like soul food. Parked up outside in the old school. The new me back with the OU. Whatever happened to her? Amber Rose? I don't know. I think she's, she's doing her own shit. I forget. Um, I don't even know how she rose to fame. Amber Rose was a very pretty... Uh, started off as an exotic dancer, I do believe. Um, I didn't know who she was before she was dating Kanye West. Um, I only knew of her because of Tyga. Right, right. Um, you know, maybe she was one of those that just started off as like a music video girl. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Stripper turned music video girl. Because that is a 
That's an attractive woman, let me tell you. If you guys ever come out to LA <clears throat> and you want to see every girl possible who just wants to get a, somebody pregnant so they could be rich, <laughs> I'm not saying this like in a sexist way. This is like something very known in LA. All-Star Weekend. Ah, yes. All-Star Weekend is crazy, dude. Like you, if, if it's like in LA, you see it. It's nuts. Like some of the finest fucking women I've ever seen in my life just walking around. I'm like, you guys look all AI generated. They're on a mission. They're on a mission to get impregnated for sure. It's nuts. <laughs> like I thought it, you know, I'm not from here. So when people tell me these things, yeah. I take it with a grain of salt. Right, right. And the first All-Star Weekend in LA that I saw, I'm like, uh, what the fuck is this? They're like, dude, it's All-Star Weekend. They're trying to fucking smash. Yeah, man. They're trying to find their basketball player, their star. And it was fucking real, dude. Isn't that crazy? I think I would do that if I was a girl too, if I was hot. I mean, you know, I think, I think uh, that's probably the hustle for a lot of hot girls who have decided, you know what? All I really know how to do is be hot. Um, I don't know where I'm going from here on out. So let's see if I can lock me down something rich, you know? I Everybody has their hustles. <laughs> that's the hard part, dude. The better looking that you are, why use this here up here? I why? Know. What's the point? I know. You get everything your way anyways. Yeah, I struggled with that a lot growing up too. You know, it's like, God, what do I ah, do? Is it worth honing my creative skills when I'm this attractive? You know? Like, what is the point? What? <laughs> oh, you shaved your little peach fuzz you had when we filmed yeah. the episode. <laughs> this this fool. <laughs> this fool was like, oh, look at Davey's growing facial hair. And I told him I, had, I didn't shave in six days. <laughs> it's only like a little bit of hair coming out. <laughs> so you, uh, you can't uh, grow a beard, huh? So I only recently started going uh, facial hair under my neck in the last like three years. Really? It took fucking forever. Yeah. So I just couldn't really grow facial hair. My grandpa's like that. He can't grow facial hair either or when he was alive. Mm -hmm. You know, rest in peace, you hairless bastard. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> look, this is all I got right here, dog. Do you, do you ever wonder what you would look like with facial hair? Yeah, I, I play with it on my apps all the time. Good, look good or bad? I look so good. <laughs> <laughs> do people fuck with it? Dog, me with a full beard is like, let me tell you, you know, like sometimes when I'll do the brand deals for vlogs and what I was doing sometimes is um, I would have to knock out a brand deal so fast for a vlog. Like, oh, this vlog is brought to you by HelloFresh, whatever, whatever. And um, I would like do it last minute. So I'd be kind of sleepy, like the lighting was shitty and I'm like, oh God, my face looks terrible, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna throw on this fucking app um, on my ad read. Bearded you know? Tim. Bearded Tim. And then bro, you know, and mind you, I do a family vlog now. So my fans are very respectful of Chia. I never get thirsty comments. But when I put that bearded Tim up, heart eyes all in my comments like, oh, my God, Tim with a beard. Oh, my God. It was a what does it feel like to have people find you physically attractive? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You get thirsty comments all the time, dog. For my personality, dude. Not no. because of the way that I look. No, 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 no. Go nah. back to fucking some Sin Foods episodes. There's so many like, oh my God, David is so cute to me. Well, I remember. Well, because you don't read comments like I do. I'm very obsessed <laughs> with reading my comments. I read them all the time. So I see all that shit. The only time that I knew that I got somewhat thirsty comments was like, I did this joke for the Secret Society. It was called this back to school launch that we did, right? Okay. And I was one of the models, and I was this dude named Jose Kim. Okay. And I had this mullet, but then we I, I did this AI thing where I put tattoos on me. Mm, and yeah. fucking girls like tattoos, man. Girls really like tattoos, yeah. Too bad I have a really low threshold for pain. <laughs> I can't do it. Mm. I can't. It's like, could you imagine just getting your fucking skin pierced all the way up? No, I can't do that shit. So you would, um, have you ever like thought about like, oh, if I wanted to get one, this is what I would get? Oh, I it? know what I would get if I want one. It would be, so, it would be fucking Korean as shit. Okay. Um, Kimchi, oh, just a bucket of kimchi on your back. <laughs> it's me on the floor like this with my mom beating me. <laughs> and it's my dad just telling me about his stupid shit and calling me dumb. <laughs> That's as Korean as it gets. But I would want like some cultural shit. Mm. Um, and I would I would think about like a half sleeve up the arm oh. this way. Just because you could cover it up with a t-shirt. Right. Uh, nothing on the forearm though. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about doing a tattoo like that. But at the same time, like I'm so finicky. Oh, I, I, I'd like if I get one I'm like this isn't good enough I need to do something else yeah I also like not only that I feel like I'm also very uh, wishy-washy you know mm. what I'm saying I feel, I feel like I get a tattoo and then like six months later be like god I hate this why did I do this you know I, and when I was younger I feel like if I didn't lean so much into the humor 
and like having a, you know, kind of a fun personality for mm. sure. I think I would have like got ripped. Mm. I would have, you know, had tattoos. I would have done all this other shit to make up for the fact that I can't, you know, yeah. I, I have nothing else to fall back on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But because I've been able to kind of like, you know, finesse my way into conversations and do all this stuff. I never had a need to want anything else. Like I wanted the the conversation piece to be my main power. And uh, obviously it worked out. But look trash while I did it though. Imagine how fucking annoying I would be if I wasn't funny, dog, but was still like, you know, you know, and I was trying to overcompensate and I was one of these little buff fucking five four dudes that like and then I that would becomes never their be whole, your friend. Their whole personality is just like the fact that they're just buff little dudes. <laughs> You would hate me so much because I would be talking so much shit about you on my podcast. <laughs> I was like, dude, you know this fucking guy, right? We wouldn't even be friends. <laughs> oh, absolutely not, man. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, though. When I do see guys who are really good looking and they get the treatment that hot girls get, it's fucking, it's, it's weird. Yeah. It's fascinating because girls are not that much different from guys when they see a hot dude. Oh, look, for a traditionally attractive man, it's a whole nother game. It's it's crazy. I saw it once in my life, and yeah. I just I didn't first know what was going on. Yeah. But watching girls like like kind of fumble over their words, mm -hmm. and they're just like laughing at everything he's saying. He's not even funny, bro. Nothing he said was funny. And I just sat there looking. I'm like, is that normal for you? So there was this one really attractive dude that used to do a couple shows with us during the YouTube era. He was um kind of looked like Chris Brown. Um, well, well, well. He was a rapper. Uh, his name was Aaron Knight. Shout out to Aaron. Um, and uh, this motherfucker was sexy, right? Oh. And I remember one time, ah, well, did Rick see this and tell me about it? Or did I notice it happening? I forget. But it was like girls would just, we'd be walking down the street and girls would see him and be like, hey, where you going? Hey, like blah, blah, blah. Like trying to get his number out of nowhere. Cat calling this motherfucker. Like, We've never experienced this life. We need fucking talk to me for 20 minutes and then you might think about giving me yeah. some punani, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, but this one, like, had girls just like stopping in their tracks and being like, hey, what's up? You know? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's because people act like it doesn't happen. Yeah. But it does. Oh, 100%. It, it, it really fucking does. And just watching that dynamic, I'm like, oh, you know what? There's a lot of things that guys and girls are different on, but one thing is always true. Good looking people, whether you're a guy or a girl, they get the same fucking treatment. They definitely get, have it a little easier. Yeah. They just fucking, people just follow them around. Quick funny story about, about Aaron Knight. He was, like I said, very traditionally attractive man. Um, so you would kind of expect him to be on some like toxic masculinity shit, right? And mind you, like my group of homies, you know, we like to do some very, like we, we, like, we like to joke around on some gay shit, right? Like very like, you know, gay jokes, things that would make people go pause, hey, yo, pause, right? So one time we're in New York, walking down the street. Uh, it was a group of us after a show. And so we always used to like to play, oh, yo, who'd you rather smash? This girl or this girl? This guy or this guy, right? Just play, like, picking people in public, people pe picking people from the group, whatever, whatever. Peter Piper picking puckle peppers? But, uh, picking puckle peppers, right? So I go to Aaron. I'm like, Aaron, who'd you rather smash? Lil Crazed? <laughs> Or Joan Lee. They're both walking in front of us, right? Um, and so, <laughs> Joan Lee, if y'all don't know Joan Lee, is my rapper homie from Long Beach. We've done some really fire bangers uh, together. Uh, also, um, he just dropped a new album if you want to check it out. He raps and sings. And uh, so, Joan Lee, rapper, you know, very like swaggy Cambodian Thai dude. Um, and then, you know, Lil Craze, Cambodian rapper as well. They're both walking. I'm like, Aaron, who draws the smash? Lil Craze or Joan Lee? I'm thinking Aaron's going to be like, hey, chill, chill. Hey, yo, pause, pause. Hey, no, eh, chill with the gay shit, right? This for Aaron goes, oh, man. <laughs> and he goes, stops. He goes, not going to lie. Joan Lee look like he'll blow my back out. <laughs> <laughs> we died. <laughs> hey, you can't be fucking funny and good looking, dog. Uh. That's not right. <laughs> That's hella funny. That's not right. <laughs> uh, that's like that Matt Reif. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Good-looking motherfucker. Hilarious as shit, dude. But guess what? Also a very nice person. That fucking sucks. <laughs> but then I, I, I saw like uh, old clips of him. He was a little goofy looking when he was younger. Yeah, he definitely grew into his looks. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, he got some new teeth. He started working out. 
Um, he he looks like a model. Yes, he does. It's those cheekbones, you know. The the fucking he like you know when they say he looks like a Hercules from fucking the, the cartoon, like all chiseled, the, the nose, the cheekbones. Looks like handsome Squidward. <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. Okay. It's a, a very ugly way of saying somebody's very handsome. <laughs> uh, you know what I always, whenever I watch Korean like movies and dramas and shit, I'm always like, God, I need to lose 10 pounds. Oh, well, I mean, for uh, them, they go through extensive, extensive skincare routines, nose jobs, all this other shit. Mm. I mean, we can't really compare. They, they're, they're literally generated. But their cheekbones are so nice. Yeah. I mean, they, their, their skincare routine is fucking nuts. Like, um. I found out what they do, like the whole prote- process, mm-hmm. and they they say that um, we call it filtox. So it's basically um, it gives you that glass skin texture. Mm. So what they'll do is micro needling, right? And so what micro needling does for your skin, it causes abrasions. That healing process causes like new cells to develop for you, you to get better skin. So mm-hmm. if you have acne scars, uh, you'll do like micro needling, and it'll help it out a lot. I've seen it happen uh, people that I know, and it's gotten rid of like. 90% of their acne scars. Mm-hmm. But they also do it with a, a small dose of Botox and other vitamins. And they do that consistently over like six months. And it fucking gives them like glass skin. Damn. Closes all their pores, smooths it out. Amazing. I was recently, you know, when I was, I was filming the show with Nick Cannon. And um, one of the guests was um, this uh, cosmetic surgeon woman. And I had made some comments about like, and the whole episode was about insecurities as men and like what people uh, don't realize that we might be worrying about dealing with. And I was like, yeah, you know, like my acne scars are blah, blah, blah. They're in my mind sometimes. Um, if the lighting ain't right, sometimes those acne scars hit a little crazy. And afterwards she was like, you know what? You know, you got, if you let us laser you, um, we can do like seven sessions of, of a thing that will leave you with like no downtime, you'll be able to shoot the next day, it's whatever, or one very intense session where you're, you'll need 10 days of downtime, but you'll look amazing afterwards. And I'm like, I'm thinking about it because I'm like, oh shit, I'm not really going anywhere with the new babies. Can you do that so I can see it? Yeah. Because I've never seen somebody do the laser thing. I heard about the laser stuff too, but mm-hmm. um, I saw like the redness that you get. You can't go outside for like, like two weeks or something like that because the UV rays are too harsh. She told me 10 days. Oh shit. 10 days is pretty fast, but I'd probably lose my mind. I'd probably do the long period one where- Over over the course of like multiple visits? Yeah, because why not? It's less painful, right? Yeah. And I, then- I was thinking that, but then I'm like, fuck it, man. I ain't going nowhere. Let's well, you got the new kid anyways. Right? Knock it out. Tim, do it so I could see it. Then I'll do my face. You don't need no laser. I do. My skin texture is not that great. Dude. What are you talking about, dog? Your skin's beautiful. Dude, listen, listen. I have to do a lot of shit. Okay. Every night. This is my skincare routine, guys. Look, and I, you know, I actually experimented with this recently. I stopped doing my skincare routine for about two weeks. My skin got looked like trash. Did it? So, clarifying toner. For all you guys out there, right, who think that um, you don't need this stuff, you do. Your face looks like an elephant's butthole. <laughs> um, <laughs> toner. In the daytime, use a vitamin C serum or a serum that doesn't have, like, too many retinoids in it. Uh, Because it'll ruin your skin with the UV. Then use, I like to use a very light lotion with hyaluronic acid that helps with the fine lines and plumps up your skin. Oh my. And then a little layer of sunscreen after and that's about it. You can do more stuff if you want. I like to keep it simple. Nighttime, same thing toner, but we use a vitamin A serum, which is UV sensitive. So you do it at night before you go to sleep. Mm. If you have bags under your eyes like I do, I don't really care for the bags because as you get old, you're just going to have them anyway. So who the fuck cares? But then you put little eye cream on. Then you put on a thicker night cream to keep it more moisturized. And then that's really about it. Guess what? I have the same amount of steps in my process. Skin trash still. Stop eating cheese. Oh. Stop eating cheese and creme fraiche. Why? (laughs) It's hard, isn't it? What's the point of living then, huh? I can't eat beef like that too much. If I do, it breaks out. <clears throat> well, on that note, thank you all for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. And, um, uh, yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. And, uh, and uh, I'll see you all. I'll catch you on the flip side, motherfucker. Peace. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Dudes.